Hello everyone, this is Dr. Ananya. Welcome to my channel. In today's video, I'll be talking about the difference between 2D echocardiography and 3D echocardiography. Before starting the video, I would like you to subscribe to my channel so that I can share all the useful and valuable information with you guys. In this video, along with telling you the differences between 2D echocardiography and 3D echocardiography, I'll also be telling you about the procedures like how is it done, why is it needed, how do you get prepared for the test, what can the results reveal, and if there are any risk related. As you know, your heart is one of the most important organs of your body. It is basically a pump which is made up of muscles and has four chambers. I hope in your school time, you would have learned the functions of the heart, right? It has a very basic function. That is, it takes all the deoxygenated blood from your body and makes it oxygenated blood. And again, let it travel all around the body. That's pretty basic, right? But the mechanism isn't that easy as it sounds. In recent years, there has been a huge increase in number of cardiac diseases. It sometimes becomes challenging for the doctors to find out the diseases, but thanks to the medical technology. Ever since it has been bringing up new technologies, new developments and new inventions in the form of machines by which doctors can easily try to guess and diagnose the disease of the heart. The machines have always been improving and even they are improving now. Every day we get some or the other new technology. The same happened with echocardiography. Earlier we had 2D echocardiography, but now we have 3D echocardiography. Before getting into the differences of the 2D echo and 3D echo, let us understand what is echocardiography. Echocardiography is one of the most useful imaging methods because of its availability and ease of access. It uses sound waves to create live images of your heart. The images that has been created are known as electrocardiogram and not Instagram. This test allows your doctor to monitor how your heart or heart walls are functioning. In easy words or in layman's language, we can say it is an ultrasound of your heart. So how does getting an echocardiography help doctors? The images which we get after doing echocardiography can tell a lot of things about your heart. It can give us information about the clots in the heart chambers. It can also tell us if there is any fluid around the sac of your heart. It can tell if there is any problem with the aorta. Aorta is the main artery connected to your heart. It can also tell if there is any problem with the pumping function of the heart and its valves. An echocardiogram is key in determining the heart health of the muscles, especially after the heart attack. It can also reveal about the heart defects in unborn babies. Okay, so why your doctor may ask for you to get an echocardiogram? Your doctor may order an echocardiogram for several reasons. For example, your doctor might have discovered some abnormality from the other testing or while listening to your heartbeat from the stethoscope. Or if you have irregular heartbeats, your doctor may inspect your heart walls. Also, your doctor might want to check the ability of your heart to pump the blood. Sometimes they may ask one if you're showing some signs or symptoms such as shortness of breath or chest pain. So now there's one question that each and every patient has. Is it painful? So here's a good news for you. This test is not painful in most of the conditions. Why is it not painful? It is not painful because it is non-invasive. It means nothing penetrates inside your body. So are there any risks related to it? Usually, there are no risk. As you know, if you go for a blood sugar fasting test or you do some other test, you have to get prepared, right? So how about this test? How about echocardiography? Do you need to prepare yourself for this test? As I told you, this test is very easy and very simple. You need not prepare anything. But make sure you inform your doctor about all the medications which you are taking, be it prescribed medicines or OTC medicines. OTC means over-the-counter medicines, which means you don't need a prescription to buy such medicines, for example, paracetamol, which is easily available everywhere. Also very important, tell your doctor if you have a pacemaker. But there is one thing in which you need to prepare yourself about your dressing. You can basically wear anything which you like. 
If you are going to the hospital, the hospital will give you or provide you with a hospital gown. But if you are going to a lab for the test, it is advisable for you to wear something comfortable which can open in front because you need to open your chest above the waist. But don't worry about the privacy. Your privacy is maintained and in some conditions you are provided with a sheet to cover. So what happens during the test? During the test, you will lie down on the bed or the table. You may be provided with a wedge or a pillow at your back to support. Later, your doctor or technician or radiologist may apply a gel on your chest. Sometimes, if there is excess hair on your chest, your doctor may ask you to shave it off or take the hair off. After applying the gel, the doctor now will apply the gel on the transducer. The transducer is a probe with which we get the images, just like ultrasound. You might feel slight pressure on your chest because of the transducer, but that's very little. Sometimes your technician or your doctor might ask you to hold your breath or, or sniff through your nose. You may also be asked to change the positions. Usually, it's easy to get the images of the heart, but sometimes, in some cases, if it is hard to get images of your heart, then you might be advised by your doctor to get a contrast IV. But don't worry, this contrast IV is non-iodine based, so you will have no allergy. And this IV contrast is just a medical dye. After the test is done, your doctor might wipe off the gel. So how do you feel during the test? Usually, there will be no major discomfort during the test, other than feeling a slight pressure. Sometimes, you might feel some coolness on the skin of your chest because of the gel, but it's very little again. So how long does it take for the test to get done? It usually takes 40 minutes to 1 hour to get the test done. After the test is done, your doctor might review the images and you might get back home. What can the results reveal? The results can reveal abnormalities such as damage to the heart muscles, defects in the heart, problem with pumping function, abnormal cardiac chamber size, about the clots in the heart, about the valve problems, and if there is a stiffness in your heart. Remember, if there is a stiffness in your heart, then your heart might not pump blood effectively. What happens if you get diagnosed with any of these problems? In case, if you get diagnosed with any of these problems, your doctor might ask you to get some more tests. Also, your doctor will work with you to develop the best treatment plan which is suitable for you. Now, I hope we have enough information about echocardiography and you almost know everything about it. So what is 2D echo and 3D echo? As the name tells, 2D means two-dimensional and 3D means three-dimensional. Earlier, we used to do 2D echocardiography, we used to get simple 2D images. Those 2D images were quite good in telling the heart defects. But sometimes it is difficult to get the exact images or it is difficult to diagnose the exact problem. So later on, a better thing was developed, which is 3D echocardiography. It means 3D images are created and doctor can have a better look onto your heart. So now you know how 2D echocardiography is done, right? But how about 3D echocardiography? How do you get 3D images? So almost all the procedure will be same, but there will be a slight change. In this, we will add one more transducer to get 3D images. In 3D echocardiography, your doctor might put a small transducer from your mouth into your throat. But don't worry, your throat will be made numb. It means you will have no sensation of the transducer which will avoid the gag reflex. It means you will have no feeling of vomiting. Numbing your throat makes it pretty easier for the doctor and the patient to perform this. Now, with the help of the transducer which is placed behind your heart and in the throat, it is easier to get better views of the heart from behind as well. So, in 2D echocardiography, the images you get is in the plane, but in 3D echocardiography, you get a three-dimensional image which is taken from different angles and it makes it easier for the doctor to diagnose the exact disease. Now, here's a question. Do you need 2D echocardiography or 3D echocardiography? So, if you're going for a general checkup or for a normal checkup, you might not need 3D echocardiography. 2D echocardiography is good for regular health checkup. 
But if you are having a heart valve surgery or if there is any heart defect in children or young babies, then only we do 3D echocardiography. I hope by now you might have understood well what is echocardiography and what is the basic difference between 2D echo and 3D echo and which test do you need. I hereby advise you to get your heart checkup done on a regular basis. It can also diagnose if there is any early disease, also it gives you peace of mind. I would also like to tell you a very important thing. It is very necessary to get tests done from a reputed and reliable lab. A link to the reputed and reliable lab will be provided to you in the description. If you have any questions or any suggestions, please feel free to comment below. I will try my best to answer all the questions. That's all for today's video. Stay safe and stay healthy.